Hey there fellow creators, Ben here from Cinderblock Studios, and this week I really need your guys' feedback on something. So if you haven't seen my announcements in a few of the recent vlogs, um, I am teaching a actual in-person class workshop thing. Uh, it's coming up on two weeks and I have my outline for it, but I have never actually presented it. So I figured the best way for me to practice this is to do a recording of it and throw it up on YouTube and ask for uh, feedback and results from you guys before I take this in, uh, to a class in person. Uh, this is gonna. This is what this video is for this week in, in lieu of a, uh, a, a one of our, my regular vlogs. One because I'm already kind of a day late, and two because I'm two weeks out from this thing, and I really, I really need the, uh, really need the constructive criticism on this. So the way this is gonna work, uh, I've, I've kind of set things up uh, in in general in my living room here for for a, the sense of less distracting backgrounds. Um, I have my tablet off to the side with my outline, which day of I will have printed out, but if I need to make any adjustments you know, going forward, I don't want to print it out just yet. Um, my instructions so far with the, with the listing of, of what's online is uh, tell every, I told everyone to bring a uh, 2B or darker pencil and uh, some paper to draw with, and that's it. I have a fistful of other things I, I will uh, be bringing with me. Uh, in case people forget things, or I would probably have some extra paper floating around as well. I'm probably going to be going out of my way to get a bigger pad of newsprint before then. Um, this is just what I threw together. I had, I had half sheets, essentially, which I taped together for the sake of this video. But I will have something probably a little bit larger uh, the day of. Um, other than that, I'm just going to go ahead and get into this. Obviously, there will be... There's gaps where I'll like ask for people's feedback or, or, or you know, Q&A sessions, stuff like that. The, the actual time frame for the class is like a two hour session. Uh, for those of you watching, feel free to grab uh, your own pencil and paper and follow along. Um, if you guys watched um, the, what was it, about a month or so ago, I put out composition, uh, uh, the Compositional Design for Landscapes Part 3, I think, or something like that, or, or Landscape Design Part 3. Uh, that video was sort of my rough draft of what this is now. Uh, so it's basically all the same, the same stuff, but uh, organized a little bit better uh, into an outline. So all of that said, I'm just going to go ahead and jump into this. Um, uh, the, the, it's presented in such a way that I, I have mostly a whole big lesson, and so you can follow along and draw, or you can just draw at the, at the appointed time towards the end, you know, whatever works for you. Um, I have this to demo with. Um, which I will be probably stepping to the side to do periodically, uh, but for the sake of the current space in my living room, I will also be blocking it, uh, which I won't be doing day of. Other than that, hope you guys enjoy this, and please, any feedback you can give me regarding uh, structure, uh, your ability to follow along, or anything else I may have missed, please let me know in comments uh, before April 6th. Hello and welcome. Uh, for those of you that uh, know me or don't know me, I would say most of you Probably don't, because uh, I don't get, I don't get out of my studio as much as I, I would like. Uh, my name is Ben Yago. Uh, this is Compositional Design for Landscapes. And um, if you guys do know me, you probably know my art more than you've seen my face. Uh, I'm the guy that does the weird, uh, high, brightly colored fantasy landscapes that are floating around here here at uh, Red Fishbowl. Um, I've been doing my best to get out to more of these community events, and, uh, well, here I am teaching one. Um, so I've never done a class or anything like this before. Uh, I decided to call it more of a workshop than a class because I feel like to do a class, you'd have to, you know, be a um, more refined teacher, I guess. I don't really consider myself that in, in any capacity. So this is sort of more... I'm going to talk for a bit and demo some things and you guys can follow along and try it for yourself. Other than that, it's, it's pretty low key. Don't think of this as being real formal or anything. So just to check before we get started, uh, the online advertisement for this uh, listed that you guys bring uh, some paper to draw with and a 2B or darker pencil. If you guys are missing either of those two, I do have some extras over here. Uh, there's a whole series of dark pencils you guys can pick what you want, so provided you guys, you know, return them before the end of the day. <clears throat> so as I just mentioned, uh, 
I'm going to talk for a bit, overview some concepts. This is all really basic stuff, but uh, you know, if you're not used to drawing landscapes or, or designing landscapes or anything, uh, it's good to review it to, so you kind of get a, a, an idea of all the concepts and everything like that. Um, where are we at? I also have my notes off to the side. It's really easy for me to forget things, so if I get off track, please bear with me. So this is, um, I just want to make note up front, this is just sort of my process, how I design landscapes. Uh, not necessarily how everybody does it. This is not, not, none of this is an absolute, just how I approach things. If you guys are here, I feel like you probably know that already, but uh, don't think, to, you know, take everything I say with a grain of salt and, and you know, it's, it's really about uh, finding ways to adapt different artists' uh, techniques into your work to, to make uh, yourselves better work and work, work that uh, you think, you know, you, work that you want to make. Anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm rambling. Let's, let's go ahead and kind of jump into this a bit more. All right, so let's talk basics. So just familiarizing ourselves with everything, the basic elements and principles of design. Uh, fairly elementary, public school-esque uh, curriculum. Um, I know it's a mixed bag depending on where you went to school and who, who was your art teacher and if you even took art class. Uh, just show of hands, who has even heard of the elements and principles of design? Okay, most of you. I, I, I would hope so. Um, does anybody know them? At, at least, uh, at, at least the, for the elements. The principles are a little less important for what we're talking about today, but elements and principles of design, who's got them? Line, yeah. Color, that's one of them. We're, we're doing pencil days. We're not really worrying about color. Uh, shape, shape's one of them. Shape's really important. I, I, I know, it's easy, to draw, uh, it's easy to draw a blank with these. So I, I have them written down here. Line, shape, form, value, color, and texture. Uh, textures, I, t I tend to forget about texture because it's easy to, it's, it's, in my brain, I lump texture in with, with uh, value a lot, but, and, and, but that's, that's stuff for another day. Um, so yeah, li line, shape, value, form, uh, color, and texture as the, the seven basic elements of design. Principles, uh, again, for this class, a little less important, uh, and I'll just run through those. Uh, some, I mean, some of the concepts we're gonna be touching on, I'll, I'll probably be using some of those terms, uh, but uh, uh, unity, balance, emphasis, uh, Contrast, movement, pattern repetition, variety and rhythm, and some people will include proportion in that, but uh, I feel like proportion is specific to a very, to very particular uh, concepts in art, like, like anatomy, for example. You know, proportion and anatomy is important, but if you're doing an abstract piece, it's not. So, yeah, I, I, I tend to not include that. But most importantly out of those are, are things like uh, balance and contrast and movement, and those are the things that, at least in the back of your mind, you probably want to be subconsciously thinking about as we go. So we're all good on materials, we, we're, we can, all right. Um, so uh, yeah, again, as I mentioned, I'm gonna talk, you guys can draw along with me if you'd like, or we'll have just a big chunk of time for that a little bit later uh, on in the day. Um, uh, could be easier to follow along, but uh, I, I'm not really going to stop to let you draw, so I'm just going to go and go and go and go. So it really depends on how you learn, but let's go ahead and, and jump in. Now, for you guys, I asked you to bring pencils. For my demos, I'm actually using a big uh, uh, brush pen for this, primarily because it's going to show up better at a distance, uh, but the techniques really work all about the same. I probably will at some point be grabbing a, a, a darker pencil, but for the, the, the vast majority of what I'm doing, uh, it's just going to be this. So, when thinking about landscapes, it's important to think about something that I think a lot of people overlook when they talk when, when they think about landscapes, and that is uh, perspective. Because there, there's there's a lot of people out there that will say, "Well, there's not really perspective in landscapes because you're not looking at the big the, the the grid lines and like a city street or a long hallway. Like those extremes are really really important, sure, and and that's a lot of, a lot of times how you learn that." But, but the, the core structure of like laying out the line, uh, your horizon line and your vanishing point, that is actually vitally, vitally important uh, to a lot, of this, a lot of these concepts. So uh, when, when I'm designing a landscape, I use the, the, the principle of thumbnails. And um, thumbnails are just one of the easiest ways to um, 
get started working and thinking about what you're doing in terms of uh, those lines and those shapes and everything else like that. So just as, as you know, basic review here, uh, designing uh, a space of any kind, you have w what you would call the picture plane or you know, wherever you want, you know, you, it, it could be your, your entire sheet of paper, could be a part of the sheet of paper or you know, the edges of your canvas, what have you. Um, a line for your horizon, uh, often also referred to the, as the eye level line, so wherever you as the viewer are looking. Um, and then somewhere along, along that space you have you know, the vanishing point and then you know, your, your, your you know, one point, two point uh, perspective lines to, to give you the idea of this is where we're looking, this is where all of these, these lines, these shapes converge at, at, you know, at the back. Um, so whether that be, you know, a high horizon, a low horizon, or, you know, what have you, um, that's really all we're, we're really talking about as core basic structure. So, so to kind of get this, this going and this idea going, um, we're going to start with smaller thumbnails and, and go larger from there. Uh, at least that's how I approach a lot of my work. Um, so these are relatively big thumbnails. Uh, think about your, your, your first few boxes. Let's, uh, if you're following along, if you're drawing along, just start by boxing some out. I like, I like to go maybe like one by... Th I like to go maybe like one by three inches, at least uh, on my own page. That is, uh, you know, like this big or so. This is very small, and I know you guys can't see it at a distance, so I'm going to be working larger. But keep in mind, for your own, uh, for your own uh, page and your own practice right now, keep those, keep those really, really small. Okay, doesn't have to be perfect. I didn't ask you to bring a roller, just as long as they're kind of close. You know, it, it, it's, it's really easy to be like, I have to be perfectly straight line. Don't worry about it. Get, free, free your arm up, Lo loosen your arm up. Get, uh, get, a, little, get a little freer with, it, with, with what you're doing. <clears throat> okay, before we go ahead and start drawing immediately, I want to talk briefly about thinking about landscapes in general. So anything can really be a landscape. Uh, it, it's, it's really easy to imagine, um, you know, something like, oh, it's obviously it's like, it's a big horizon or it's a big mountain or something like that. You can find landscapes in anything as long as you're boiling things down to basic spaces and shapes. Uh, for this, uh, one of the best compositional tools who has any idea what this thing is? Anybody? Nobody? My faith in public schools art program is very much diminishing today. So this is a viewfinder. Um, I learned about this uh, in high school when uh, we were d designing uh, compositions for a still life. You have a big giant still life half the size of the room that doesn't move and you have students all around the room of course. And all of this, you know, students all around the room means everyone's still life while painting the same subject is going to be coming from different perspectives. And it's like, well, how do, do, do you do, usually in a still life, you're not painting the entire thing. You're painting a section of it, uh, especially in a big group setting like that. So a viewfinder allows you to uh, see what perspective looks like and, and what that's going to look like in your frame, but just in that frame. Think of the, think of the cardboard outline as a as the edges of your page, so to speak, or the, edge, the edges of your canvas. Uh, I, in my viewfinder, I have the uh, lot, uh, strings taped out for the rule of thirds. Real quick, if you're unfamiliar with the rule of thirds, uh, essentially split up, lines spl splitting up the, the picture plane into uh, thirds, um, nine boxes in this case, and the points where those uh, lines intersect, or strings in this case, are usually interesting focal points. And that's, this is a general compositional idea. It doesn't just apply to landscapes, it applies to you know, still life, portraiture, figures, whatever. Um, it's why this is 
tool is really handy to, to, to have around uh, if, you, if you don't have one uh, they sell them but also you can make make the one with just this is cardboard and dental floss and, and masking tape it's pretty easy to do um, but what this will allow you to do is start to see um, how to frame up your composition if, if you're unfamiliar with, with, with doing that in a more reasonable uh, basis. Uh, best way to do that is like hold it out either at arm's length or whatever and you know being able to do that close one eye so you have a, a better frame and just start figuring out where and how to map out that composition whether that be vertically or horizontally both work and as long as you're just picking out shapes like I'm looking at the edge of the chair here and I, like that could be, you know, a shape in a landscape, like turn that into a, like a cliffside or something like that. Anything can be a landscape, anything could be a portrait, just, you know, manipulate your shapes and change your details. Okay, that said, when I dive into the thumbnails and we think about composition, think about, again, thinking about it with the, with the viewfinder, is finding the positive and negative space. Um, if you guys remember nothing else today, uh, breaking out uh, breaking things down between the shapes of positive and negative space will help you design pretty much any landscape you can think of. Uh, pretty much, and again, from the ground up, just with shapes. Uh, now, when I approach a project, a lot of times I have at least some idea going in of like, I want to make a forest or I want to make uh, this big, something with a big waterfall or having some idea going into a project is really, really important. Um, well, not... It, it can be really, really important. There, there, there are certainly projects that, that all just kind of do more freeform, but if you're coming, coming in with more intention, uh, it is definitely important to do that. Um, if you're not used to even, like, I, there's so much stuff in my visual memory bank that I can just like, yeah, I know what a forest looks like. I can just grab that. If you're unfamiliar, Google is your best friend. Reference pictures, uh, especially stuff, I would say like National Geographic, um, um, yeah, I just remember being a kid leafing through National Geographic magazines and stuff. Um, but specific places in particular, uh, national parks, uh, the U.S. national park system, whether that be just people taking pictures in the park or like the national parks website, uh, you can find so many great images there or just literally go to any uh, great landscape photographer's Instagram uh, and just look at their pictures and and uh, if you're you know copying one directly or you want to use one for a particular project always good to ask permission from the photographer to do so first but obviously uh, we're just talking about practice and reference images here so not really uh, as big of a deal uh, also if you want true value for national park photography uh, the the classic guy that did that for black and white photos is Ansel Adams um, so good good jumping off point there anyway um, so to get started, uh, it's just, we're just focusing on big blocky areas of shapes. Um, think about your sky as your negative space and your land elements as your positive space. So big things in front, skies in the back. You can drop in a horizon line, uh, and I usually do, uh, for a lot of the mini thumbs, not sometimes. Um, but having having a base of, of roughly where you, where you want things to be, I'm just gonna throw some horizons in there, um, and then just start blocking things out. Don't think details. Don't think, oh, I'm gonna, definitely gonna make this a tree, and you can you can make some of those decisions. But if you're gonna be like, like this is not about every little branch. This is not about every single big or every single little detail or value or whatever. Uh, I'm actually holding my, holding my pen off to the side. You're welcome to do the same with your pencil. Uh, experiment, don't just, you know, rigid and, and, and hold, hold, loosen your grip. Let yourself, let yourself play a little bit. Uh, use the whole pencil, you know, if you can. I actually have a couple of, if you guys want to try a little later, a couple of, of, of whole graphite sticks. These are great for this as well. All right, so, yeah, I'm just going to grab that and just scribble, throw some blocks in there and, and jump between, you know, jump, jump between uh, each of your thumbnails. It's important to often do a bunch of these. It's 
it's really easy to overcrowd everything. I'm like more, 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 more. That's why I do this with ink a lot is, is because once it's like, all right, well, it's completely full now. <laughs> um, if anyone brought, brought an eraser, put it away because it, it will, you'll, you'll, you'll overthink it. So, you know, shapes, scribble shapes, up, down, left, right. Um, you can think a bit about what you're going to do here. Um, I mean, you know, thinking about it as in like, well, maybe do like a big cliff face or, fo or follow that perspective line, you know, and actually build that a bit. So you can be more random, you can be more intentional, but just utilizing, you know, that space and, and seeing what, you know, you can do in it. And they may not look like much and they might, and they, and they probably won't you know, right away. But that's sort of the, uh, the, the first basic idea, figuring out that section. What are the big, what are the big shapes? What are the big shapes? All right. Now, there are a couple other things you can do, again, when you start being a little bit more intentional. I'm gonna throw myself some more boxes out here. And they don't necessarily have to be rectangles. I'll throw some squares in and you know, bigger, wider rectangles and stuff like that. Extra, extra long box even. If, 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 I'm, if I'm making these extra long boxes, I kind of already have a canvas in mind of, 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 of what I want to put a, a piece like that on. So uh, we, we, I've been throwing a bunch of basic flat horizon lines in these. You can curve your horizon line. You can, you know, you, you, can, you can skew it, throw it at an angle. You know, like if the you know sun sun's over here and or, or up up on that edge of the horizon. Um, sometimes I'll even utilize clouds as um, the clouds in the sky as, as positive space, even though they're kind of not. Um, but it's it's in it's it's really about intentional and not not blacking out too much area all at once. But um, then knowing. What places, and again, you think about rule of thirds, you think about don't overcrowd anything too much. Um, finding, finding places and, 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 and shapes in that environment. This is where having a bunch of reference pictures also helps a lot too. Um, I'm just pulling, I'm pulling a lot of this out of the, the bank of paintings that I've done before or, or sketches that I've done before. Um, but it's not that different, so you know, you know, think basic horizon line, and then, you know, maybe I want to do like a river or something like that. And then, you know, think about all the things that would build up around that space. And that river could turn into a canyon by the time you're done with it. You don't know. But, you know, finding... And as long as it's a sketch, you can always, like, I, you know, a thousand of those. I can change it. I could change it six times by the time I, I get, to the, get to the painting. So, there's a lot of freedom, a lot of th different things you can do with... Uh, exactly which uh, place you put those all of those lines. So skewed perspectives are good. Uh, distant focal points. Um, actually, I've been blocking out a lot of foreground stuff. But even thinking about a, a fairly empty scape, so to speak. Uh, if you're doing water or something like that, it's like, oh, it's a seascape. There it is, positive and negative space. It's like, no, no. If it's a big flat ocean, it's still negative space. Uh, but maybe there's just like one little island or something back in there. And that's all, that's all you really see out of there. And it makes things, or a piers, or a, a city even, big, big tree stump. Being more selective, way more minimal with it, really allows you to do a lot of different things. Uh, no, another fun thing to play with that you can do to some degree at, at, at this stage is natural framing, and, and natural framing is really fun, especially for uh, certain landscape elements. So I'm gonna keep the this stuff pretty basic in here, and then maybe there's a big tree around one side, or, or two trees, right? Or like you're looking you're looking through the bushes, and you can't really see see everything. So all of that on the edges becomes dark and even in the final piece might even be silhouette and that leads your eye into the center of the piece a little bit more to, to, to frame up the composition 
Now, once you've done a bunch of these, um, chances are you're going to find something you like. And, and as you work, I'm t I would say, like, not, <coughs> not really focusing on details all that much, but when you get there with, with starting to, and, and, and I st we're starting to do this a little bit too. I was like starting to like starting to try to play with details a little bit. I'm starting to play with more specific shapes. I'm like, ooh, what, what could this be? What could this be? That's the idea. Keep, keep, keep your mind working. Like what lives in this space? What is this world? So when you're happy with a couple of the really small ones, again, these are about three times the size of, of how I would normally work for what I would call a mini thumbnail. Then you want to blow it up. Now, what you guys should be doing is blowing it up to about this size that I have on my page. But again, demoing for you guys, I'm going to make these a lot larger just so you guys can see them at the distance. Now, once you get to the bigger thumbnails, now you can start thinking about value and lighting and a little bit more perspective if need be. Um, one of the ways I approach this is, and especially by the time I take it after, after the mini thumbnail, when I want to play with value a little bit more, and this is the first time today I'm gonna to switch to a pencil. Um, What do I have in here? Here's, a, here's an 8B woodless. This will help me out, out, out a little bit more here. In my own work, I go out of my way to establish a light source. Um, once I kind of have an idea of what, where things are. Now, if the light source isn't immediately like, here's the sun in the middle, and it, so let's say it's a 50-50, if, if that's the case, it varies a lot with the work that I do. But when I'm establishing light, generally, whether the, that be a sun on the, image itself or off to the side, I will usually denote that being with a circle, two lines and an arrow saying, this is where my light source is coming from. And as long as I'm not drawing on an entire sheet of paper and using the thumbnail technique, putting this symbol in really, really helps your brain say, all of my lines and my shadows and, and things should be somewhat focused around that. So which one of these do I actually like? That's the real question here. <coughs> Specifically, one that works with the, with the lighting. I established I established that light source and didn't really look at any of these. Um, I think I want to modify this one, but flip it a little bit because I have a I have the canyon edge up on the right side, so I'm just going to put it on the left. So from here, I will uh, again reestablish horizon, and from that. I tend to do a scribbly outline of just where those shapes are. Think about sort of like contour lines, sort of like a gesture. If you if you guys do figure work at all, you know, just finding that basic shape a bit more. Say maybe throw in a perspective line here. And this isn't, you know, this isn't. Um, art lessons, sit there with a the ruler and draw out your lines. Just, just eyeball it. If you're doing anything in landscapes, it's like sh short of like buildings and structures and things that need that, those harder edge lines, <clears throat> you don't need to be that specific with it. Uh, especially, I would say, if, if you're leaning towards doing painting, um, you want the painting to look Painted and not like it's a paint by number and every little every little detail is perfectly You, you, you got to be able to loosen yourself up. Uh, think about your four joints of drawing a finger wrist elbow shoulder More more elbow shoulder movements. Keep keep uh, keep your lines loose Okay, what was I working on Var variation on that one? All right with that we have bigger bigger foreground element there bigger foreground element there Turn that into a hill or something Keep keeping on Thinking about that perspective, like, are, then it's like, all right, is this? Did, did these are these mountains just in the background? Do they taper off or something into a valley? You can play a bit more around like that. And then <clears throat> with those lines, then you can start sort of rendering things out a little bit. I mean, this this is by the time you hit hit the bigger thumbnail, now you can play. 
Now you can find things beyond just the positive and negative space. You know, is there a small town in this world? Is there, is, is, are these just big monumental rock structures? Is there a forest somewhere? Uh, so my light source here, I just had a sort of vertical top-down light source, but I'm actually going to go ahead and put in a sun in this one with some glowy ring line. <clears throat> and then, you know, I'll come in and start shading a little bit. You know, and this allows me to start building a little bit of value. Now one thing, uh, if, you're not, if you're not used to doing a lot of direct light source work or, or anything like that, uh, and you're thinking about perspective, now I put my sun roughly where the uh, vanishing point is, more or less. Um, obviously don't have to do that. Uh, but if you're thinking about, you know, think about like basic, basic ball on a plane kind of deal. Have a ball, you have your light source doing that, but maybe your vanishing points over here. I should, should have put that line a lot higher up so that made more sense. Vanishing points up here. Um, part of the instinct is be like, oh, well, the shadow and, and you know, everything, because the, the vanishing points over here, I screwed that up. <laughs> vanishing point over here. And you, the, the idea is like, oh, well, the vanishing point has to match with the, with the, 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 the shadow has to match with the vanishing point. Sorry, this is probably a little confusing. Um, but, but think about your light source as a secondary vanishing point that those shadows reflect out of. I probably could have made that sound a little more coherent. Um, but it's something to really consider, um, especially the, the more you play with different light sources and where things are going. Um, in this case, this light, this is probably a better example. This light is coming from more, more directly closer to this and behind it, so there's not going to be as much visible light. So this is not quite silhouette, but there's going to be a lot less, you know, color lines and stuff. And all of, a lot of that comes to do with just observational drawing and seeing how light works in reality and drawing from references. But of course, this is more imaginative and we're just finding stuff as we go. And of course, those of you guys that know my work and know my um, style, more or less, uh, you know I love putting uh, little people in my work all the time. It's something, it's a, something everyone looks for, like, where are the little people, where are the little people? I don't just do that because it's fun. Uh, there is a very distinct reason why there's little people in almost all of my work. Uh, it's actually something I only started doing around 2013, I think. So maybe about 10 years or so. Um, I would always just make a big landscape or something like that, but without some sort of a reference to scale, those shapes could be any size. Like, like all right, they, they could be, it looks like a big rock, but it might just be a little pebble or sitting on the ground. You, you don't know. Um, as soon as you put a figure or any other universally recognizable shape, creature, or object in your piece, it gives an instant scale to the project. So, you know, whether that be, you know, a bigger figure, or in my case, since I'm not a figure artist and I hate making figures, I just put in two little, basically, shadowy stick figures into my work to immediately turn the, okay, it's a landscape of any, any size, to this is a grand world worth exploring. So, uh, I, I will say that if you're doing... <clears throat> if you're coming from figure work, if you, if you do more figure work, if you're much better with figures than I am, um, it's great to incorporate that figure a little bit more. A lot of people that do uh, more characters and, and portraiture will say something along the lines of, I'm just bad at backgrounds. I need backgrounds. And, I, and I, I had, I've had a few people over the years refer to my, uh, my landscape says, you're the king of making backgrounds. I'm like, it's not a background. It's not character backdrop. It's composition. You have to build the entire, the entire piece around that. It's, it's, not, just, it's not just like, a, 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 you, like pulling down a, a photographer's uh, marbled backdrop to a portrait. Like, no, no. You, it's, it, it's a much bigger idea than just character background. You know, my landscape's like background. Background to me is like just the sky and the mountain in the, in the back. Everything else is a bigger character for me. You know, the, the mountain is the character. 
And the more you work, the more you want to play. Um, something I love doing in my work as well is messing with weirder shapes. Uh, putting, put, or putting things that don't necessarily belong in a, uh, in a landscape, in a landscape. So it's, I, I did a piece a couple of months back where I took, uh, it was actually at the top of a, a skull study, and just dropped that into the middle of the landscape to give it a really kind of eerie look to it. Um, you know, add in extra large versions of common objects. So here's a... 10 foot, 10 story high coat rack buried among the mountains or something, you know, like uh, uh, get, get your imagination working to uh, throw in some strange and unusual uh, imagery into your work to, to, to keep it a little bit more fun. Or, you know, stick, stick with more, something more realistic. It's your choice. But, uh, you know, really being able to, to play a little bit more is, is, always, um, is always more fun, more useful. So at this point, uh, I think I've said pretty much everything I want to regarding this process. Um, if you guys have any questions for me, uh, let me know. Um, I'm going to open the floor to you guys to, to uh, if you haven't been drawing along, to try this for yourself. Something to keep in mind is uh, different techniques can depend on different materials. And, and, and again, I'm hoping you guys aren't you know reaching for your erasers that I told you guys to put away. Um, the most simple part of this is um, just getting that idea of basic shapes and positive and negative space. And again, part of the reason why I told you guys to bring pencils and not pens or whatever other media is you can do a lot with a pencil. Uh, and it really allows you to you know, slowly build those, that value up over time. Whoa, play, play with more detail. I'm just gonna grab another one. Um, and, and you know, do more. So, you know, this is a, this is a carpenter style pencil um, because of how it's, it's kind of shaved down, you shave it down with a knife, usually, you have a flatter edge to that. You know, you can get, uh, you can get different shapes with that and different marks. You know, sometimes thinner when you're going side to side or vertical or, you know, what have you. Um, you know, for most of this, I'm using this uh, Faber-Castell uh, uh, big brush pen. It's got, got a really nice uh, rounded tip to it, so I can get you know some some you know thinner, finer uh, brush lines. Uh, but the, because this tip is slightly stiff, I can you know be able to turn it on its side and get those really blocky lines. Another thing that's really good for these is uh, a big sharpie, you know, nice king size sharpie because of that chisel tip. Um, in my own sketchbook, when I'm doing the mini thumbnails. <coughs> I actually have a chisel tip um, micron pen, which I use uh, specifically for that reason, because the, the tip itself, compared to the size of the thumbnail, is really big. So you can't necessarily make those details. You know, you have to be able to just do that with like two shapes, and then maybe one horizon line in the back, you know. So you really have to think about the bigger picture in, in, in the bigger uh, areas, again, of space and shape in that. Uh, some other stuff I have here today, uh, if you guys would like to try any of this, uh, again, you know, pass them out to, to, to your uh, heart's desire. I have a couple of big graphite, uh, some people call them graphite crayons. It's a stick of solid com uh, compressed graphite, no, uh, uh, no wood for the pencil. I have also a series of, a series of woodless, woodless pencils here, but they do have a, a, a wrapped a coating around them. These are really great as well for, again, like, because it's not just the tip, and you can turn it on its side and get bigger, wider, weirder lines uh, and, and areas of color and shape. Uh, what else is in here? Um, charcoal can be really fun for, the, for this process as well, uh, especially when you're doing more of the mini thumbnails uh, because you have uh, a little bit more freedom uh, to block out some rudimentary value as well as, you know, blending with your finger to uh, uh, play a little bit with value before you even take it to the, to the larger thumbnail side of things. Uh, one more thing I wanted to mention with these is um, because I'm, I really, we were just talking about dry media today uh, for the most part, but um, I've done this with watercolors, like one, one single watercolor and a big, nice big wide flat brush. Uh, another good alternative to this, uh, a lot of people love markers. I'm not a 
huge marker fan. Uh, and they don't have these in-store at Blick, so you'd have to get them online. But uh, the, the Copic Wide Sketch Markers, I love using these because of that extra wide chisel tip. Uh, again, it, it's one of those things where it's, it's the less you think about detail, the more fun you can have with shapes and then find more interesting details later. Obviously, if you're messing with these markers, they're going to, and in the Sharpies and the pens, they're going to bleed through your paper a lot more. So, you know, be aware of that. You don't want to damage any of your art from underneath. Um, but these, again, really, really similar. You can get great marks with these and, and, and play a lot with different, uh, different shapes and compositions in that sense. Um, so don't be afraid to, you know, really play around. And I'm sure everybody has their phone on them. So, you know, pull out. I only, I only brought a couple of these of these markers here today because I only I only have four. I only brought two because I have a limited a limited range of colors in uh, in, in my own personal working set. Uh, so, you know, I'll have to share them if you want to mess with these. Um, but similarly, you know, being able to push that push the color around and, and or or the grayscale around in this case to find uh, all of those interesting shapes and, and varying things like that. So yeah, I'll open up the floor to you guys. If you have any questions, uh, if not, uh, hang out, uh, drop yourself. If you have any questions about the process, are you doing it right? Or you're not finding something? I'm, oh, that's what I was saying. If everyone's got their phones, find yourself some reference pictures to, to, as, a as a jumping off point. If you're if you need, like, I don't know what I wanna do. Search, search big biomes, jungles, deserts, uh, forests, canyons, you know, uh, general search, waterfalls, what, like waterfalls in the forest or something, you know, and get yourself moving on that. Think about the big shapes first, uh, start jumping through, through hoops that way, um, and just start finding, start, start building and finding your world as you, as you see fit. As you guys are working, uh, to give you guys a little, some extra, extra inspiration, uh, I brought some of my Kofic Wide marker sketches with me. Um, some of these are just on pieces of tracing paper. A bunch of them are on a um, resistant piece of um, clear acetate film, uh, most of which have a backing paper to them. Uh, if, they, if they don't, just sit, stick them over some white paper um, to see the whole thing. But uh, this is a similar way of using this, th this technique in order to um, just, again, playing with shapes and, and, and basic, basic space and value. Uh, so yeah, I'll just, I'll pass these around if you guys want to mess with them or, or well, look, look at them, not necessarily mess with them, don't, don't destroy my sketches, but um, yeah, all of these are, you know, similar processes, um, just more, uh, varying experimental things that I that, that have come out of my studio at home uh, so feel free to uh, you know utilize these uh, for your own for your own sketches as inspiration uh, through, through the course of uh, through the course of the, the afternoon here okay looking at my recording time here and um, we're coming up on like 45 minutes so this is because it would be a two-hour session I would say probably leave people to their devices for about you know 20 to 30 minutes and going now into what would eventually be the uh, wrap up and conclusion. Okay, I just checked our time and we are starting to reach the end of at least the planned session. Um, I'm not sure what else is happening here at the gallery today, but uh, feel free to hang out and keep sketching uh, at, at, at your leisure. Um, for the sake of the workshop, we're gonna be wrapping things up here in a few minutes. Uh, so I just want to give you guys some, some final thoughts and anything, uh, things like that. I hope you guys, uh, hope you guys had a blast with this. Um, again, I've never done anything like this before, but if you'd like to see more, uh, workshop-y feedback things from me, uh, let me know. Um, I want to remind you guys just in, as a, as a general you know, rule of, you know, one artist to another kind of thing, uh, the, the limits of you know, this technique and what you can do with it um, is only limited by your inspiration. So get out there, uh, practice this more, play with, try this with like as many different media as you, as you can and, and remix it and experiment with it and, and, and find, find ways to make it work well for you. 
Um, it's always important to, uh, you know, as creators that, you know, you, 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 do, you do what you like with the tools that work well for you. Uh, if you're not necessarily big on using graphite, uh, again, try it with something else. Try it with watercolor, try it with, with, with markers, try it with inks. Uh, my day-to-day -day, my, my day -to -day sketchbook, I'm, I'm not using pencil, I'm actually use, I'm using inks for like 99% of my sketches because you can't, you can't erase, you can't, you can't make that mistake, so you have to learn to just uh, ad adapt and, and, and find, find new ideas through that. Um, as a general plug, uh, I brought with me a sign up to my newsletter. If you guys are interested in seeing more of my work and where I'm, where I'm showing and want to keep following uh, uh, the, the journey with me, I also have a YouTube channel for those of you that don't know. Uh, my business name is Cinderblock Studios. You plug that into Google and you will find literally pretty much all of me. Um, I've been posting stuff on YouTube for about a decade. Uh, there's a lot of stuff about painting, uh, the, the, you know, all kind of different resources and stuff like that. Tons of tips and tricks about uh, media that you may or may not even know about. So uh, I, I recommend uh, give, giving that a, a try. Uh, and a watch if you're at all interested in that. Um, if you borrowed any pencils from me today, please return them before you leave or I'm going to panic looking for them when I get home. Other than that, uh, I hope you guys had fun and yeah, be sure to, uh, to, to, to keep on creating and uh, using this technique in, in, your own, in your own work at, at your leisure. Um, if you would like to see more of these sessions from me, um, uh, maybe a part two or a, a painting version where we talk about color, um, my email's on that, that newsletter thing, so just you know, drop me an email or, or you know, DM me on Instagram or something. Um, any kind of feedback you, you can give uh, that way would be great. Other than that, have a great day, and um, yeah, happy sketching. Okay, I hope I did okay. I, I feel like I stumbled a little bit when I was talking about vanishing points and, and value. I'll have to work on that one. Other than that, I, that's kind of the, yeah, that's the, that's the gist of what I'm doing in two weeks. So now, rather than emailing me, let me know in comments um, what you thought of this. Um, if it needs improvement or work, or if the structure doesn't quite feel right. Actually, it feels really good to have tried this once. Um, I didn't even really need the outline, probably because I just wrote it, you know, an hour ago. But I was able to, it's really able to work without, without messing with it too much. So yeah, I'm gonna get all this stuff cleaned up. I hope you guys have a great week. Uh, whether you uh, watched along and, and drew along, I know this is kind of a distance for this. Again, I will have a bigger sheet of paper day of, but uh, yeah, I also have, you know, compositional design for, for, for landscapes part three, which I put up a month ago, which gives you close-ups of, of this stuff. So if you wanna actually get the in-depth video version, go watch that video, as well as parts one and two of that series. Uh, because it covers a lot more of this stuff. So yeah, let me know your thoughts. Uh, your feedback is very much appreciated so I can make uh, my workshop uh, in person for, for my local gallery community as the, the best that I can. For this video though, thanks guys for watching. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this. Please let me know your com thoughts and comments below. And uh, this has been from Cinderblock Studios. Keep on creating and I will see you guys next time.